Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Lunchtime with the Lord. This is our daily Bible study. And if you've been watching these videos, you understand we've been going through the book of 2 Thessalonians in the New Testament. Uh, this is our third week uh, in this study. You can find all the videos on this Facebook page or on this YouTube uh, channel uh, if this is your first time watching. Uh, I would ask you, as I, I normally do, to like and share these videos. Comment, let us know who's watching, where you're watching from. And if, you're, uh, if you can, where you're at right now, uh, and you have access to your Bible, pull your Bible out. Uh, we're going to be in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, this is a short book, only three, uh, three chapters, and we're currently in chapter 2, getting close to being halfway through chapter 2. So we're really about halfway through, uh, over halfway through uh, this, this book of 1 Thessalonians. I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians. And so uh, I invite you to stay on, stay uh, with us, continue watching the video. And uh, uh, today I, I just want to look at one verse, and, and it's going to continue on the, uh, uh, from the theme or from the subject that we've been talking about on yesterday's video. Uh, as chapter number two, uh, we've seen Paul is addressing some of the end time events, some things that's going to take place in the future. And specifically, he's talk, he talked about the uh, Antichrist. And we looked a little bit about that yesterday. And we ended with verse number four. And we talked about how this man, was a, he opposeth in verse number four. The Bible says he opposeth God. He sets himself up to be exalted. He not only is the one that's going to go against God, but he also wants to set himself up as God and to be recognized and worshiped as God. And so that theme or that subject continues to our verse number five today that we're going to look at. And the reason we're only going to look at one verse today, even though it's a short verse, is because verse six continues along with the, with the theme of the Antichrist. But uh, it, 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 there's a several verses. There are a few verses that continue, verse six and, and seven, um, will we'll, uh, go together. And so I don't want to make the video too long by covering three, uh, three, four verses. And so we'll look at one today, and Lord willing, tomorrow uh, we'll pick it back up. But verse number five, as I said, continues with the line of, of uh, the subject matter that he's been speaking on, which is the Antichrist. In verse number five, Paul says this, Remember ye not that when I was, with, was yet with you, I told you these things. He said, Remember. Ye not, that when I was with you, I told you these things. What's well, these things? The things he's been talking about in chapter number two is, is some end time events concerning the Antichrist. Paul said, when I was with you. Now, during these videos over the last uh, three weeks now, I guess, we've mentioned several times Acts chapter 17. It's in Acts chapter 17 we find Paul on his missionary journey to the church, uh, to the city of Thessalonica, and this founding of this church, this local assembly of believers. Now, we understand according to Acts chapter number 17, and we've mentioned this a, a, a few times in these studies, that Paul was only there three Sabbath days. And the reason that he was only able to stay there three Sabbath days was because of the opposition that arose against him, um, that arose against Christ and Paul, who was preaching Christ, and that persecution was something that stayed there. And, and we've talked about this in previous videos of how Paul had a desire to know how they were doing. And um, anyway, and so the, this persecution it, it caused him to leave after three uh, Sabbath days. And so yet, while that was just a short time of being with them, uh, Paul had spent time teaching, not just preaching the gospel, but also discipling those converts. And so in verse number five, he says, remember, while I was with you, I spoke on these things. In other words, I told you about the Antichrist. The things that I'm giving you, the things that I'm uh, giving you in this epistle was something that I had taught you while I was there. And he says, remember you not. There's a great charge there. He says, uh, you, you forgot some things. Now, I think all of us understand what it means to forget things. We uh, the older you get, the more that we forget. Uh, we get to the point that we walk in a room to get something and we're in there and we forget why we even came, we went into the room. And uh, some of us have different, our minds work differently. Sometimes people are more visual learners and, and we recognize things like that. You'll, you've probably heard people say this, I can't remember names, but I remember faces and, uh, and so forth and so on. 
And some people has this uncanny ability to remember some of the craziest information. Like, how, why did you commit that to memory? How are you try, How are you able to to bring that up or recall that from your memory? It seems so un, uh, unimportant, uh, random information. And so all of our minds are different and have different capabil- uh, capabilities. But the charge here to that they forgot and uh, that they remember not, I, I, I don't believe was because there were some mental uh, blocks there, that there was something there that uh, that kept them physically uh, from remembering. It was more of a spiritual matter because they didn't remember spiritual things. Uh, truth is that uh, what we commit to memory, first of all, has to be committed in. In other words, we have to, we have to, uh, uh, the Bible says this, taste and see the Lord is good. The Bible talks about eating the word of God, talks about it being meat, talks about it being milk for the sincere believer. And there has to be an intake of that, first of all, for we ever to be able to recall that. Um, and what we spend time and attention on, what we put, what we spend effort on, often is something that we can, uh, we can recall from memory. And the truth of the matter is, is the Holy Spirit that lives in us that, that gives us the promise uh, in Scripture that he'll help us to recall those things. He'll help us recall them. The Bible says uh, that uh, uh, to hide his word in our heart that we might not sin against God, to hide it there, that it will, that it will come to light, that God, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit living in us will help us, will recall it uh, when we need it. And he does that. Um, and so I don't think this is a physical problem that they had, and we all have that. We all have physical limitations, and we all understand the older we get, the, the less that we can remember many times, and and sometimes we think that our brain, we have like brain fog or something going on. Uh, but I don't think that's what the problem here was. It was a spiritual matter. Paul had spent three weeks with them and gave them a lot of information. And specifically here, he's talking about the information concerning the end times, the Antichrist. And he said, you didn't remember. You didn't remember. It wasn't a biological problem. It was a spiritual problem that they had forgot. And how... Uh, often we as Christians, let me just let me just put it to where we live. How often we as Christians, when God does something in our hearts and work, whether it's through the teaching of, of his word in a Sunday school class, a Bible study, or uh, a preaching message, and we sit there and we we are taking it in and we're listening, how often it is and just maybe even a couple days if someone asks you where was that passage of scripture from or where was it that the teacher taught from what was that what was the the couple points that that he made that that God really used in that setting that got your attention you're there and the holy spirit is working in your heart and you hear those and and maybe the holy spirit begins dealing with you about an area that you need to be doing or an area that that we need to get out of our lives. And how often, just a few days later, we forgot it. We have forgot it. We can remember, uh, I'm not talking about remember the title of the Sunday school lesson or the title of the message. I'm, I mean, the main points that God was trying to teach through his word, we forget. We forget. Now, most of the time, that's not a biological problem as far as we can't remember anything. It is a spiritual problem. Because we, you know, the Bible talks about meditating on his word. There's a difference between reading his word and studying his word. We know that. There's a difference between uh, reading his word and checking it off a list or listening to a message and, and checking off, I went to church this week. There's a difference between that and meditating on his word. Meditating means to chew on it all day long. Uh, it's the picture of, of the cow chewing its cud all day. And the more we chew on what God is giving us in his word, the more that we'll remember. And the more that we remember, the more impact it's going to have in our lives. Because as I mentioned uh, this past Sunday um, in, in uh, preaching, one of the messages, I said, what we believe affects how we behave. And, uh, and what we... Uh, the word of God changes our lives, but we have to be able to, re- when God works in our lives, when he works, we need to remember. Paul has spent three weeks with him. He said, I've, I've taught you this, but you don't remember. You don't remember these things. I told you these things. What a charge to them. 
what what a, what a uh, indictment on ourselves when we think about all the things that we remember that really isn't that useful, that really doesn't matter when we're thinking about eternity, but we forget the eternal things that God tries to teach us from his word. And, and so let us put more effort in meditating on the scriptures we read in the morning for our devotion, meditating upon uh, the preaching and teaching that God allows us to sit under, meditate on those messages. It's when we do that, it's the Holy Spirit begins to work in our hearts, and that's when real change comes, when we remember, but don't forget. I hope this has been a challenge to you. I hope it's been a help to you. And uh, I, I like and share this video. Let's reach as many folks as we can. And I hope your Tuesday is a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day today. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Lunchtime with the Lord. God bless you.